Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. We're going to get into this with David. David, if you let's start here, right? How about explaining to the folks who you are, what's your business that you do? We can probably start there. Right. Maybe a little bit of a background on who you are, where, where you're located, etc. Okay, uh, David Boy Bones, I own uh, Down the Barrel LLC. Um, we custom build rifles. Uh, we recently got up with Black Rambo to uh, build the uh, Black Rambo line of pressure rifles, and we're coming out with a couple more uh, deals with Black Rambo. Um, like I tell everybody, I was I was one of those I'm one of those guys who says you can do it no matter what. Mm-hmm. I was raised up there poor. I came from dirt poor, joined the military for a while, and then got into guns, and here I am. You know, okay. uh, North, I'm in North Dakota originally from North Carolina, the backwoods of North Carolina, and mm-hmm. now I live in North Dakota, and we sell online at downthebarrelofficial.com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Um, let me see. I don't know if Rolando, if you have any questions right off the the the. Uh, is it right off the bat? Yes. Or is it yes, right off the bat? Yeah. Do you, do, uh, are, are your are your rifles, your custom ones on your website or on your Instagram? I wanted to check them out. Or do you have uh, – where do you have them up? Black, the Black Rambos are on the website. Okay. My custom ones, uh, we don't have them on the website because we tried to make – we want to make room for the Black Rambos. Okay. Uh, custom ones you can call. And if you don't get me, leave a message because I'm always busy. But uh, with the custom ones, we do according to you. So we get together and we actually build it according to the way you want it. Okay. Cool. What's the website? Just downthebarrel.com? Downthebarrelofficial.com. Oh, downthebarrelofficial. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, because everyone uses it. There's a down the barrel is very popular on the internet. So here, I'll share that. I'll screen share that for the folks out there so you guys could see it. And you could go uh, check this out while we're here talking down the barrel official. So do you guys do handguns and rifles? Uh, we drop ship handguns, but right now we only custom build rifles. We only custom build AR pistols oh, okay. and AR rifles. Okay. So, all right, cool. Um, and I'm just taking a look here. What's the base? What's the uh, ground up of the, or the... Uh, I guess the way I'm what I'm looking for here is to say where do you start with the rifles? Is that from a particular company? Is it your lower? What's going it's on? my lower. Uh, we start okay. with my lower, my handguard. Uh, we have DTB handguards. We have mm-hmm. a custom upper uh, that's built for us, and we have our lowers. Mm-hmm. And pretty much we start with our lower, and we can cut your handguard out any way you want. So like if you want Hank Strange cut in it, okay. you can cut Hank in it. Uh, okay. So the the Handguards are built according to the way you want them. Uh, and then we Cerakote them, mm-hmm. uh, custom barrels. and I mean, the whole nine from there is custom any color you want, any way you want. It takes some time to get through it, but it's pretty much everywhere you want. It's worth it in the end. Okay, cool. Um, for anyone that's watching us here, you could just look in the background here of David, and, and you'll see some, some of his custom stuff. Of course, mm-hmm. for the YouTube overseers, he's not touching anything. Those are in the background. Don't get out of hand. Um, shout out to everyone who's coming in. Let us know if you guys have questions and things like that. We'll we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can here. Um, I see Gun Doctor TV is out there. Shout out to him. Uh, Razor JB Dan hates you is also there. Uh, he says, "What is this? Sorry, I'm late, but you'll have to start over." No. <laughs> You're just gonna have to go for the ride right now. Um, Eric Gonzalez says he's grilling and watching Lot Lau on Constitution awesome. Day, America. Is it Constitution Day? It is. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. I'm it slipping. Is day. What? Mm-hmm. Okay, at least I got I got the little mini Constitution here. Yep. Yeah. What are we supposed to do on Constitution Day? Anyone? Anyone knows? Uh, uh, read re- Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah re- I guess pre- read. Yeah. The preamble uh, from memory and uh, oh, the first. Oh, from memory. Uh oh. Yeah, and the Bill of Rights. <laughs> oh. Can any can any one of you do that? Either one of you guys? Can you? Uh, I can do the something? preamble, but I can't do the uh, the entire Bill of Rights like verbatim. Okay, you want to do some preamble for us? Uh, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. 
uh, to ourselves and our posterity uh, to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Oh, nicely done. Yes. Yeah. Nice that that one I've got, and then I can yeah. I can do a few amendments. How long, but... how long have you had that? Uh, <laughs> how long uh, you... I, in eighth grade, uh, they made us recite it in class, and you had mm -hmm. to like come up with like a creative way to memorize it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I split it oh, oh, almost like a haiku in like different verses, and then oh. that ever since then I just I've always had it in my head. Oh, that's so. cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Wow, yeah. me, I'm just like, we the people. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah got that one down. Mm -hmm. uh, Gun Doctor TV says, yes, it is, and I was born on this awesome day. Happy birthday Sweet. to you, sir. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday to you. Uh, and Razor JB says, Carolina, Carolina boy. That's what, did you, is that what you said? Your, your family's from Carolina? David? Yeah, North Carolina. North yep. Carolina, okay. And then mm -hmm. you're, so you're out in South Dakota now. North Dakota. North Dakota. Okay, North Dakota. See, you got to pay attention. Um, <laughs> how is it? What is it? I'm guessing it's a massive difference, man, North Dakota. Yes, it is. Uh, North Dakota, I'm about 20 miles from the Canadian border. And with the wind chill, sometimes it gets about 60 below zero here. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, it gets yeah. pretty cold here. And then North Carolina is like humid where I'm from. It's like mm -hmm. uh, Piedmont area mm -hmm. right out Fayetteville, so it's like humid. So to go from there to here yeah. was a drastic change. And now when I go back, everybody, it's like everybody's like, "Oh my God, I'm cold!" And my kids and I are out there with like t-shirts on. Oh. <laughs> Adaptability yeah. is crazy. Yeah, I see the kind of. I could see a little bit of that in the background. If you look here at your backdrop, I could see some stone and it looks like a. Yeah. I don't know if it's a log cabin type of a deal, but it looks nice. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Personal. How many years have you been out there? Yeah, good question. Uh, do what now? How many years have you been out there? I've been out here 12 years, a little oh, over okay. 12 years. Okay. Yeah, so we moved, we moved up here right when the economy kind of went down. I mm -hmm. think it was like 08, 09. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad's from Belcourt. He's from the Turtle Mountain Reservation here. So he's like, mm -hmm. um, come up here, man, you know, because that's when the oil boom was going up mm -hmm. and the house was going down. So mm -hmm. I came out here to actually work on trucks as – um, uh, you know, as because there was money here mm -hmm. and there's always been money here and there, there'll probably continue to be money here as long as there's oil riggers and oil wells. Yeah. And I ended up staying, I was going to come out here for a couple of years and it's just peaceful here. It wasn't like back home. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I got here, I saw like little kids riding their bikes around the town and mm -hmm. I was like, unbelievable. Like old why, school. No, why <laughs> these kids. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just ended up staying. It was a great place to live. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. Um, so the, I'm guessing there's just not a lot of people then, right? Or uh, what's your what's your take on that? Here, there is a lot of people here because, um, like, we're right next door to Minnesota, right down from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it's kind of like little towns separate. Mm -hmm. You got a couple big cities, but most of the little towns with two to three thousand people populations. Mm -hmm. So it's small mm -hmm. compared. to you know, Fayetteville and places like that, but mm -hmm. it's okay. I like it. I like yeah. that it's... Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, like you said, I think peaceful. So uh, a couple of things that's come pop into my mind, Orlando, I don't know if there's anything in your mind. What, so are you, you've got Native American Indian ancestry, I take it? Yes, my, yeah, my dad's uh, from the Turtle Mountain uh, Band of Chippewa Indians, okay. uh, Nisha, man. And then, like, First Nations, and my mom is, like, Cherokee blended. So okay. she's, like, uh, you got you got dark skin, light skin, you got all that. So we kind of, she's actually hatchet there. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a, I'm a blend of everything. French, my grandfather was Irish. My okay. my grandmother was, like, a slave or something. It was mm -hmm. just a blend. So yeah. I can't get mad at nobody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could always find someone to get mad at. Trust me, you know. <laughs> If you want to, I think a lot of that comes down to your personality and how you see those things. Definitely. And, you know? and I just, I'm I'm a firm believer and I just walk away from anybody that's negative. Like, we'll be mid-conversation and you start talking bull drive, I'll just walk away. Mm -hmm. I ain't for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then the other thing that uh, came to mind is that you said you did some uh, military service, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was in the 
uh, U.S. Army 11th ACR. I got out after about three years, a little over three years, and I came to North Dakota and I joined the Guard for a couple of years, and then I got out. I was kind of, was kind of done with it after that. Okay. So, so is that where the, um, you know, where your attractions to guns started, or are you just always into guns? Well, being in the South, you're always into guns. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, being in the military introduced me to a new level of firearms. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, because... In the South, you got your rifle and your shotgun and, you know, your base. And you see something extravagant, you're like, oh, man, that's cool. And then being in the military, it just introduced you to, you know, the AR-15, M60, you know, 249. And then coming out of there, mm-hmm. that's really got me into the love of firearms was mm-hmm. the AR-15 coming in out of the M4 carbine or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And so I just fell in love from there, man, and just that was it. I always knew I was going to be a firearms manufacturer. Oh, okay. Oh, really? So did you do did you do something directly firearms related in the military or you did something else? Well, I started out as a um, tank maintainer. I was the guy that like split the packs and worked on the tanks and turbine engines. And then so they they sent me to Fort Bragg for a minute. And then I left there and I went to Fort Irwin, which is NTC National Training Center. Mm-hmm. And they fix tanks there, but civilians do it. So okay. I was but I was pretty much the guy that, you know, um, went out to the field and, you know, played the bad guy and played the games and stuff that did oh, the cool. training soldiers and the hand to hand combat and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh nice. so that was me. OK. That's how my whole military career. OK. Just running through the deserts of California. Right. OK. So um, and, and you've got some skills at fixing tanks. Yeah. Turbine engine tanks, okay. track scenery, the whole nine. And then. uh most of my skills come from uh, we we actually learn how to you know did training on mm-hmm. how to you know take care of situations and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So that was where my whole career was was right in there, um, and it was it was amazing. I loved it. I loved mm-hmm. going to the field. Yeah, right. one of uh, one of the guys who's always here on the show, Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms. Uh, he was never in the military, but he's a big military vehicle guy, and that's his favorite thing, man. Tanks, so. Uh, oh man, I yeah. I hate working on them. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, man. Cause like you'd be out in the field working on those deals at like two thirty in the morning, and in the in the desert it gets really really cold, mm-hmm. and you got JP eight everywhere, and it's all over you, and it's just what's uh, J what's JP eight? It's it's, t- oh. it's fuel. It's like a blend of fuel, like diesel okay. type fuel, oh. and it's like sometimes it comes off the hoses, and it's all over you, and oh, I wow. mean you can. Actually pull a tank engine out in a matter of minutes right you know and it's supposed to be clean but yeah. like you said always... i think it's a power pack right and you can just yeah power yeah. pack. you just pull it out just unhook a bunch of stuff and mm-hmm. pop it out hurt mm-hmm. and i just uh i hate I, I didn't hate it i just didn't like it as much as i did running through the desert and playing war games so. oh, okay yeah that's always more fun that's like uh you know, you were doing in real life, I guess, what people do on video games a lot. Yeah, I yeah. was the live Call of Duty guy, I guess. Yeah. What you call yeah. It. Did you ever? Did you ever get out into combat overseas? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, uh, I volunteered for it three times, and every time I got pushed back, they said they'd rather have trainer. You know, you would be better to train ten thousand than mm-hmm. it is to you know possibly lose one or something like that so mm-hmm. i had a lot of training to okay. do it so. okay <clears throat> it was it was no it was it was good i liked it yeah i love yeah. it absolutely um dan hates you says that jet fuel it's thin diesel mm-hmm. that... well it's like it's like a blend of diesel okay. and uh like, like i don't know i don't exactly know the blend but i know it's blended and i know it's like horrible when it gets on your skin mm-hmm. it's just thin mm-hmm. out diesel. yeah did you have any questions, Rolando? Yeah. How did you transition from pretty much servicing vehicles and things like that to actually manufacturing a firearm? So like the point that you're doing your own lowers and all that stuff mm-hmm. and go through that uh, process. So I got out the military and I was I got into diesel mechanics because that's what I knew, you know, and it just got old. It mm-hmm. really Oh, and, and it wasn't that it was a bad gig or bad job or anything. It just, it just got old. And honestly, the truthfully, I, I was, I Googled it. I Googled like wow. high paying 
certain careers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got, you got pharmaceuticals and then you have, uh, you know, firearms was like in the top five. Right. Like, hey, I can do that. I can build firearms. And it took a minute. It took like a year and a half to get everything together and get with the right people and things of that nature. And um, not knowing anything about business. Mm -hmm. That was the big thing. I didn't know nothing about business. And and so that was a, kind of a downfall, but I learned from it and mm -hmm. it kind of brought to where I'm at today and I just I always wanted to get into firearms I just didn't know how so mm -hmm. I honestly googled it that was that's the honest truth okay? <laughs> so there was so <laughs> that's you didn't, awesome yeah I know that's cool I mean that's you know what I always tell people that right because there's mm -hmm. always these people um doing what we do you run into people and they're like oh man people should someone should tell people about this and I'm like there's this little thing in your pocket that the Egyptians invented called phone <laughs> you know, and you could just Google machine anything. Yeah, right? yeah it was a magical mm -hmm. deal. Like one day I saw, you know, deal. I honestly was just tired of living. I wanted to be a, my own businessman, mm -hmm. and I knew I knew about firearms, and I was like, you know what, this is the way I'm gonna go. And honestly, I sat and I, I said a prayer, and I had 136 dollars, and that's what I bought my license with. Well, that's what I bought my name with. I, I, I trademarked my name, mm -hmm. and I made payments to trademark my name, and then I went from there. Started okay. with a prayer and 36 bucks. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, listen, you know, that's proof that anyone could pick themselves up by their own bootstraps. You know, um, yep. success is not guaranteed, <laughs> but failure yeah. is if you quit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if you quit, you've already <laughs> failed. But if you keep going and just keep striving and pushing mm -hmm. towards a goal, and, you know, yeah, I like when I got into it, I, I, I lost on my first gun deal. Then I lost on my second gun deal. I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And I started like Googling people, business people. Mm -hmm. And I started looking into how they operated business. And most business people are in real estate. Mm -hmm. So I just applied that to, you know, the gun side. And then I applied the things that I was taught mm -hmm. as a youth, mm -hmm. what not to do. Because we weren't really taught about money, so I just applied what not to do, and mm -hmm. I just combined them together and created a, um, a little platform for myself, and here I am. Yeah, that's Very cool. Yeah, that is cool. And one of the crazy things about America, and I guess a lot of places, that in, um, in all the way up to high school, they don't really teach you about money. I don't know if they've made mm -hmm. any changes recently. No, they don't. I don't think so. Yeah, no one teaches you about money. And then for a lot of us, depending on, especially depending on where you come from, right, uh, or your background, your parents don't know, so they can't teach you. <laughs> no, yeah. my parents were poor. My, you know, my dad, he was, my mom and my dad were separated. So mm -hmm. I was in that separated home. And then, you know, mm -hmm. it was uh, my mom um, growing up when I was 11, like she went mentally ill. Because mm -hmm. she was going to school, she was working, she was raising kids, so she had a nervous breakdown. Yeah, too so much. I kind of sister yeah and then so she had like an abusive boyfriend and he just beat me and, you know things like that and, mm -hmm. uh, i just took all that and i learned from it mm -hmm. honestly I, I really learned from it like i said on the um john's uh, podcast if you've been through it i've probably seen it mm -hmm. you know I've seen, I've seen a lot of stuff in my life and i just learned from it mm -hmm. yeah so um i don't know if you have another question there rolando i don't want to um you know, no, no, this is, uh, this is this is cool. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. just if we can go back for a second for the folks out there who maybe want to get into the firearms industry and from your point of view of not knowing anything or anyone, you, you know, you said you Googled it and then you said that you uh, you trademarked the name. Uh, was that mm -hmm. down the barrel that you trademarked? Yeah. Oh, OK. Uh, the, the first thing you should do is trademark your name always. Mm -hmm. um, so I trademark down the barrel, DTB, mm -hmm. uh, down the barrel official, uh, Freedom Flows, because that's our logo, Freedom Flows. I trademark my logo mm -hmm. and I learned from a person that said, you know, you take a name, like let's say Hank or whoever, mm -hmm. you take a name and then you build it up. Mm -hmm. And then someone comes in and they are trademark your name and they take everything from you mm -hmm. because now they have your name. So that was the first thing I learned to do is trademark my name, mm -hmm. and and then go from there. Build, mm -hmm. getting getting started in business is easy. Uh, doing a business is is simplified, but it's not easy, but it's simplified. But building a brand is difficult. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It's hard to build a brand to actually build a brand because nobody knows you. Mm-hmm. It's not you. You're you know. And then once once you um, trademark your name and you get into the field that you want to get into. The next thing I did was I, I got my lowers done, started mm-hmm. getting my lowers. So I could show people, hey, I got lowers, because there's nothing else you can resell your lowers. Mm-hmm. Everything else on the firearm is easy. It's mm-hmm. as easy as you find it. It's just the lowers. And I uh, trademarked my name. I got my ATF paperwork done. It took about three or four months for that to go through. And uh, then I got my, as I was doing that, I was working on my getting my lowers done. Mm-hmm. And uh from there man and then you know i i going on youtube and learning from people how to build a brand and the first thing you do when you build a brand is you got to get your name out there i heard a gentleman say one time uh grant cordon you ever heard of him yes absolutely uh, yes yeah. he i was watching him he was a big like okay so uh nipsey hustle mm-hmm. I, I used to listen to nipsey hustle every day really? it was like most like you cannot listen to Nipsey Hustle and not go out there and want to grind and make yeah, money. Yeah, he's a hustler. Well, he he was a hustler. Uh, you know. Yeah. Rest in so peace. So Nipsey was like a big yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Nipsey man. He was like a even though I didn't know him, just listening to his music influenced mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So Nipsey Hustle, honestly, like Ross, Rick Ross, I I would listen to him just the by boss. music. Right. Yeah, the music <laughs> kind of got me up. Yeah. And then so I, I started watching people like uh, Grant Cordon. I remember him saying there, he said uh, he was talking to a guy and he says, um, so what do you sell? Mm-hmm. And the guy was telling him and he says, well, I don't know you. So how am I supposed to know to buy from you? Mm-hmm. And that clicked with me. Mm-hmm. Like you got to get people to know who you are, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, mm-hmm. in order for them to buy from you. Mm-hmm. And so I started watching him. Um, like I said, Nipsey Hussle, Rick Ross, Grant Cordon. I started mm-hmm. watching just different people. Uh, Killer Mike. Mm-hmm. Or watching him and Black Rambo was like a big one too. I watched him like that. This dude is really yeah. doing it. Black Rambo you know kind of I mean? came out. How long has Black Black Rambo been out there? Does anyone a few, know? A few years. years. Yeah, he kind of came yeah. out of nowhere. It's interesting because the first time I ever saw anything with Black Rambo, I was going through something in my own video, and then I like you know obviously I, I've been doing videos for a little while, and whenever you post up videos, you're looking at stuff, and I started noticing. That there was this dude, Black Rambo. Every time one of my videos went up, it was suggesting Black Rambo. I was like, "What's what the hell? What's going on here?" <laughs> you know. And then I was looking at it, and he's like shooting sideways and stuff like that. And I was like, "Oh, okay." But he really built up that name really fast. Yeah, he's yeah. he's the one that like I watched him because that lets you know that you can be who you are and be mm-hmm. successful. Yep. Yep. Because he is who he is. He doesn't care who doesn't like it. You yeah, know, he he's is pretty unapologetic about it. I've yeah. come to I've come to realize that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just watching people like that and learning from them. Uh, 50 cent, yeah. Like 50 a businessman, dude, like with vitamin water and all that. Yeah. Just watching businessmen taking little bits and pieces from them mm-hmm. and learning from them mm-hmm. and reading. Mm-hmm. My the first, the first book I ever read besides like, you know, really about business besides like the Bible, because you mm-hmm. can read like Proverbs, you know, Proverbs is about mm-hmm. how to uh, be successful. Um, was uh, uh, what what's the one? Uh, the richest man in Babylon. So okay. I read that just kind of like I read that two or three times over and then I started reading other books from there. Mm-hmm. And what's, just, just, can you, can you uh, just tell me what's the richest man in ba- Babylon about? Uh, it's just about this gentleman who um, he was pretty much broke and he wanted to be successful. Mm-hmm. And so there was a guy who was teaching. Well, he a guy that was successful and he wanted to learn. So he went to him and he asked him about how to be successful. And the guy just coached him on little ways to be successful. And he took that coaching and he added to it until he was like the richest man. And then I think the government or something wanted him to spread the knowledge. So he started teaching others on how to be profitable and rich mm-hmm. and just things like that, like saving so much of your money or learning to live off of so much of your money. Like there was one part in it and you'll notice if you read it, mm-hmm. there's a lot of it that you see in motivational speakers when they talk about money and things. Cause yeah. like one of the, things he said was, um, the guy says, well, I can't, you know, I can't save any money. He, mm-hmm. and he basically told him you're living above your means. Mm-hmm. And so you have to live below your means and, Mm-hmm. So you get to a certain way you can live past your means. And I just took that book and read it a couple of times, The Richest Man in Babylon. That's yeah. an awesome book. I, I was just throwing up the cover of it. It says that uh, it was originally published in 1926, and it's got 144-page count. So if anyone's interested in that, 
Um, I would look it up. I also cool. I think here that uh, Audible, um, Audible has it. So I like to listen to a lot of stuff on audiobook. You know, so mm-hmm. while you're dropping some of this wisdom on us, I'm trying to share it with the people out there. I've never heard of that, so I always like to look into things that um, I never heard of. And 144 pages? Come on. Not bad. Yeah, that's a, that's a good book that you can read. It's just like um, this This podcast is called Who Moved My Freedom? And it comes from the, the book Who Moved My Cheese, which I think is a very good motivational uh, book. It's, it's for a lot of people out there who are starting a, a building a business like yourself. And basically, it's, you know, it's about rats in a maze. And, you know, if you, if you get accustomed to the, the pathway that it takes to the cheese and then someone restructures that pathway, what do you do? Right? Mm-hmm. You know, you just That's... restructure your way of thinking about it. So go mm-hmm. ahead. Sorry. No, no, I like that. Keep talking. I, I'm interested in it. What's yeah. the name of it again? It's called uh, Who Moved My Cheese? Really? I, I think... Uh, Rolando, is that how many pages is it? I don't think I think that's maybe somewhere between thirty and sixty pages at the most. You could read mm-hmm. it in a day, you know. And oh, that's what I that often, yeah, that's what I often do. Like I read that book several times a year. You know, it's a good thing just to remind you because constantly in life, doing what I'm doing on social media, what you're doing, what Rolando, and even uh, the it's just in life in general, people are constantly changing the rules. Yeah. Right. You know, so you have yeah. to learn how to adapt to that, and I think. It's a great book. It's been around for a long time, and it's a short book. <laughs> you know, that's cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read yeah. that. Uh, like for me, like I also read The Art of War. I mm-hmm. uh, was the one I read, and one that really opened my eyes was The Laws of Power. Right. Like mm-hmm. if you if you read The Laws of Power, and and look at yourself from the point of view of, let's say, the reader, just kind of step out of yourself and look at yourself, Mm -hmm. you'll start seeing a lot of people, like I started seeing a lot of people were like manipulating me and doing me wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's a book about manipulation and things of that nature, but if you look at it as far as your life, you'll start seeing a lot, and you'll let a lot of people go out of your life just by reading the laws of power. I agree Mm -hmm. with you. I think think you're right on that. That's a good analogy for that because – um, whenever, and, and you guys out there who are listening to this, feel free to uh, let us know what you think about this stuff and write down some of this stuff if you need to and smash the thumbs ups. When you listen to the laws of power, and I actually listened to the, there was a, a version based off of uh, 50 Cent. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you ever, yeah. if you ever caught up he, to that one. He, he, hmm? he was with Mr. He wrote the 50th law of power, didn't he? Um, yeah, it's some. It, is that what it's called? Maybe it's called the fiftieth law, but it's 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 based it's loosely based on the uh, on that. But fifty brings it from his point of view, as like someone mm-hmm. growing up in the streets. But either one that you listen to, especially the original one, you're gonna think, okay, this sounds a lot like things you do to manipulate people, and it might make you mad when you read it. But then I think, like you said, David, you start realizing, you know, there's people doing this stuff. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of that in there that I that when I when I listen to that and when I read it, I think, man, I don't want to manipulate people out there. But then you start realizing there are people manipulating people, and you're probably yeah. the person getting manipulated. <laughs> yeah, and that, when I read it, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I don't want to manipulate people, but I just want to see. And I started like, because I've read it like three times, three or four times, mm-hmm. and I started seeing how people were manipulating me, even if they didn't know it, mm-hmm. even if they did didn't know that they were manipulating me it was like dude that's manipulation you know mm-hmm. what i mean uh, mm-hmm. so i i started like letting a lot of people go on account of um things like that you know not mm-hmm. not just haters but people that were i found out a lot of people were doing it purposely mm-hmm. um like you never ask someone who's who who will benefit off of you any advice on business mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Their advice is going to be for them to benefit off of. So you, mm-hmm. it's better for you to walk and ask the total stranger. Mm-hmm. At least they're going to give you a real, real um, answer back. So yeah. just things like that. And I started noticing how people were using me and manipulating me, and I just I had to let them go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Art of War um, does touch on a little bit of that as well. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.